Um, some of these ideas are from Action for Happiness, so you can have a look at the actual evidence base for them, but I've tried to put them in a bit of a personal spin. So one of the first things that they say um, in Action for Happiness is train your brain to look for what's good. Um, so a tip for you to do is every day think about something you're pleased or grateful for, no matter how small. And I went on one of Helen's Beach Sea Diffin workshops, Helen's going to do the next presentation, and one of the things she said at that presentation was, set a reminder in your phone. So every night for me at 10 o'clock, it says, what are you grateful for today? And it's just that little reminder that says to me, you know, why am I grateful today? What's happened today? And I put this photo, because I looked a bit crazy, I think the other day, I was down at the uni, there was a bit of a bleak, um, blue day in Middlesbrough. But as I was walking past this tree, I was like, wow, that tree is amazing. Like, look at the colour of it leaves, it's so bright. And despite, like, the grey Middlesbrough skyline, there was just something so beautiful. I thought, I've got to take a photo of that, I've just got to capture that for a moment. So th there's this idea of, like, searching for the, for the good in the grey. Um, and that's something you can build into. I was just walking to the left, but that's something you can do. The next thing is trying to find the best moment in each day, especially when you're going through a tough patch. It can be hard to find the positives. It can be hard to find the things that you know that, that make you lift yourself up. But I think, like um, you were saying earlier, that we have to train our brains to think in a positive way. Um, so this was—I was just dropping my daughter off somewhere. This was one of my friends' gardens overlooks a cemetery, which you know traditionally might be somewhere that's associated with sadness. But actually, at that moment, as the sun broke through, um, it was just a, a beautiful moment, and as it sort of um, you know, showed nature and all its glory. Um, so it's just kind of, even in, in the darkness, or even on a difficult day, there's things, there's moments that you can capture that just lift your spirits a little bit. Um, I guess all of these things, in a way, are trying to practice gratitude, but there's all these things in your life that you can find that to be grateful for, um, so this is actually a picture of me and my friends in, in August. We got together, one of them has a drone, and so one of them was like, let's make a face. <laughs> like, oh, it was. Um, so that's what we did. But I guess when I was doing my daily gratitude reminders at 10 o'clock each day, the things that most often came up were the people in my life. When, I said, when they said, like, what are you grateful for today? My, my, my phone said that to me. And I'd be like, my husband, my daughter, my friends. You know, those people in our lives are the people that matter, and we reminded ourselves of our connection to them is really important. Um, cultivating positive emotions, you know, it's, it's really easy to get caught up in the stresses and strains of daily life, but if we can find a way to cultivate positive emotions by savouring the present moment, you know, a, a lot of the people today have talked about this idea of like being present with what is, noticing the things that are positive out there. Um, I'm lucky enough to live in Saltburn, so we have some beautiful views up that way and beautiful skies. You know, but sometimes I'll look out the window and I'll be, because I don't I can't always see that from where I am, but you'll notice the sky is pretty pink and we'll just like run down to the seafront just to watch the sky for the last bit. Um, and so, you know, spending time in nature, spending time um, like connecting with something wider than yourself, and that's for me that's what nature is, it gives you that sense of awe and that sense of peace. Um, is a way of like cultivating positive emotions in the present. And finally, oh, I should have looked at the time, shouldn't I? I'm, I'm a bit ahead of time actually. But finally, like this one's quite important, I think, because also I don't want to come across as like very Pollyanna and you know that everything's great and we have to just ignore positive emotions. But, uh, sorry, negative emotions, because the reality is like life is hard, life is stressful. Um, but can we find meaning in our negative emotions? What are they trying to teach us? What are they trying to? What message are they trying to give us? So, for a couple of examples of this that I was thinking about on the way down was, um, in fact, just in the last 24 hours. Um, and many of you may experience this in your daily work and things. There's lots of change happening in my workplace at the moment, and it's happening very quickly. It's very stressful. There's lots of uncertainty, and I think I got into like panic mode about it uh, in the last couple of days. It's like, oh my God, I need to do all this stuff. I need to really be active and engage. But what I realized, and I was really stressing myself out, like worrying about these things, trying to control everything. And then what I realized was those emotions were trying to teach me something, something that I've been reflecting on a lot over this last year. And that is, you can't 
can't control what happens in life. You have to let go. And, you know, I think it started with Terry when I did some work with him back in January, but he mentioned it in his speech today as well. It's, it, as soon as I decided to let go, the, the anxiety just evaporated. On the way down here today, like, I was like, just let go. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, you can, you'll be fine no matter what happens. You can't control the outcome. Stop trying to control things and just let go. Let things happen. Let things emerge. So even in what was probably quite a difficult or negative emotional experience, there was a message there that I could learn from. Um, and so I think that's the thing is, if we can see like the, our challenges as our teachers, then we can take something positive from them. Like being very stressed earlier in the year, feeling quite burned out, led me on this journey of well-being. Now, I've met some people in this little sauna. One of them was Richie, actually. <laughs> Has anyone been in the sauna in Saltburn? Yeah, you right. have as well. I've met. Your picture there. Is that the person to see? <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I remember the double rainbow. <laughs> that, was a, that day was yeah. amazing, wasn't it? My friend had come over from Mexico, and I was like, oh, come and try this on Saltburn Beach. We've got a pop up sauna, do a sea dip, jump back in the sauna, it's great. What? And then as we came out, as we walked out one evening, there was a double rainbow, and I was like, oh, this just happens all the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that, that was just an amazing moment, and it's like by doing those well being activities, I've connected with new people in my life, I've, I've you know, developed a greater sense of peace, and I think that's. If it wasn't for feeling stressed, um, then I don't think I would have got there this year. So our negative times, our difficult times, can be our greatest teachers too. Okay. So, yeah.